Hey guys, this is John. I'm playing XL200 in the three minute pool on ICC. Um, let's play, hmm, let's play E6 on move one. We'll switch it up. I'm offering to go into a French with this move if they want to play E4. Most players will play C4 though. Okay, so he plays Knight F3. I'm trying to figure out a unique way I can treat this position. Let's play C5. I'm just curious how he'll react to that. Probably he'll play C4. Offering to go into a Benoni or Banco Gambit. And we have a Benoni. Okay, so my experience with this opening is limited. <laughs> well, limited to the white side, let's say. And this is a combative opening. Players who enjoy dynamic possibilities and complex play will like this. Bishop f4. Okay, I'm going to throw an a6. I hope a queen a4 check move doesn't disrupt my play. He just immediately plays a4, okay. Um, let's go bishop g7. A popular line these days is uh, e3, so putting the pawn on e3. So maybe I could have disrupted that with a quick uh, knight h5, I don't know, but probably he's going e3 now. Yeah, and I'm not too familiar with this line. I mean, I, I know from the white side uh, that it's considered to be fairly promising. And that's about the extent of my knowledge. I think I'm going to quickly try and play knight e4 if allowed. So like, say he plays bishop e2, which is a common place to put the bishop in this line. I'm just going to play knight e4 and see what happens. I recall one other Benoni game I played on my channel where I attempted to do the same thing, and I don't think it worked out so well. Okay, knight c4, so or knight d2 rather, coming to c4. Hmm. All right, I'm going to do something weird. I'm going to go here, and then if he moves the bishop back, I'm going to play bishop e5 and see if I can swap those dark square bishops. Otherwise, I'm worried about trying to defend d6. Benoni players might be cringing at my play right now, but, you know, <laughs> you got to go your own way in a three-minute game. I mean, otherwise, he gets to seamlessly play knight c4, and I don't know how I defend this pawn. Seems tough. Okay, let's let's bring this knight back to f6. g7, it wouldn't have been doing much. So come back here, and he's going to get a little clamp going. He says, I need to get developed. Okay, so I need to play like knight bd7 shortly. Now he's turning on the afterburners and playing fast. Okay, let's play rook b8. I'm cramped for sure. I'd like to exchange a little bit, so let's go knight e5. This bishop is a bad piece a lot of times for black in this line. Okay, b4. Probably should have seen that move coming. Um, hmm. Do I have any tactical operations I can do here? So if I take, okay, so let's take, and figure out what to do about this pawn. I'm gonna go bishop d7. And if he takes, I'm gonna take a5 and hope that I have enough play against his knight. He maybe can play c6 or even take on d6 at that point. But uh, I need to get developed. I need to get my pieces into the game. This is the most efficient way I see to do that. I am threatening to take the knight, too. I mean, I could do that. Probably he should capture. Because I could take his knight, he takes, and I take d5, perhaps. That's one idea. All right, so queen takes a5. Yeah, let's play that. c6 or take d6. Okay, if he takes d6, maybe queen takes d5. Just nab that pawn. Then I have a and b pawns. Protected past pawns there. I built up a little bit of a time edge. Not optimistic about my chances, but the time is nice. Um, hmm. Bishop f5. Take. Taking seems a little accommodating. I'm going to play bishop f5. I want to keep this thread on the d5 pawn. If I take, that allows this pawn to get off d5. So that's why I'm playing it as such. All right, so queen takes d5. Now nah, let's take here. Let's play it this way. Okay, let's come here. If queen d2, I can double up my rooks. He's going to have some trouble with this knight. Where does this knight go? How does he get it back in the game? Threatening bishop c2 now. Ah, maybe he can go to a1 in that case. He spotted it. Okay, let's come here. 
go after this d5 pawn. We're getting fairly short on time, both of us. Um, let's play queen here. And then let's pin him. h5 could be useful. Brings the queen in. Let's come back here. Oh, he can just take that. I did not see that he could have just taken. Okay, let's go here. If knight b6, I have rook b8. So that's no problem. Let's come in. Bishop here. Bishop into f1, attack this pawn. Time warning. Let's Check. Take. Okay, um, let's take here. And then let's go here. Check. Check. Hope my H and A pawns are sufficient counterplay. Check. Okay, let's do this. Check. Check. Okay. Check. Let's take your next move. Check. I think I'm going to get him on time. Got him. All right. Well, he started speeding up at the end and uh, very nearly got me on the clock there. Um, I thought I was going to have to maybe give up my rook and not have sufficient play with the pawns. But as it turned out, my past pawns were strong. Total time scramble at the end. Anything could have happened, I think. Let's go back and take a look at it. So via a weird move order that started its life as d4, e6, we wound up in a Benoni. So yeah, e6 is just a transpositional move that you can play if you have the French in your repertoire. I don't really, but he doesn't know that. <laughs> so he played knight f3, that's flexible. I mean, white is committing themselves to certain setups with knight f3 already included. Like for instance, if I played knight f6 and he goes c4, then if he played knight c3 on move three, trying to get into a nimzo, he can no longer do that. So maybe I could play, you know, for instance, if I wanted to go into a queen's gambit decline where white has already played out knight f3, which kind of rules out some uh, potentially better options later on, I could, I could go for that. But I just played c5 and he played c4. Taking on d4 is reasonable right now, but I was kind of hoping for something mainstream that I haven't played a whole lot, so hence the Benoni. Yeah, and this, this setup with bishop f4 and then putting the pawns on h3 and e3 is pretty good for white. I think theoretically black is um, constantly able to solve the problems in this line, but the problem is the problems keep cropping up, and it's a real simple system to play for white. And all he does is play exactly as, as how you're seeing right here and puts the bishop on e2, castles, and often tries to execute this knight d2 to c4 maneuver, attacking d6. I mentioned that maybe I should have thrown in like knight h5, and I wonder if that's a reasonable move right here, attacking the bishop before it has a chance to come back to h2, because that was the whole point of him playing h3 right at this juncture, even before moving the e-pawn. So if knight h5, he can just drop this bishop back and keep it on that attractive diagonal. I just don't know because I don't have hardly any experience in this line. So now knight d2, and he's getting this in pretty quick. Oh, and by the way, earlier when I played a6 on, uh, what move was it, 7? White just automatically played a4. That's the standard reaction. If he doesn't play a4 there, I have good cost just to play b5, and I'm gaining space on the queen side. Let me turn the engine on right about now. The engine says play knight bd7, allow him to take, and then go knight b6, and I can attack the bishop plus the pawn behind it. Okay, yeah, I, I don't know if I would go into this without knowing that this is all right. Well, I guess knight f takes is better to open up the bishop on c3. Yeah, I mean, in a three-minute game, I'm just going to try to come up with something that seems to make sense. But I was pretty certain that uh, neglecting my queenside development and playing a move like knight h5 followed by bishop e5 wasn't the way to play this. So, like I said, you Benoni experts might uh, be cringing at this play. But I was just trying to defend e6. Knight c4. I think white is clearly better now. He's almost fully coordinated, whereas I haven't even touched my queen side yet. He has still pressure on d6. Um, b5 is not going to be achieved in the foreseeable future for me. I can't develop smoothly, because as you see, knight bd7 loses the d6 pawn. So he's got a nice grip on the position. I played queen c7. I thought he might come into b6, and I would have had to play rook a7 then, and then come here. But... He could, if he wants, like install a replacement knight on d6. Or maybe something like, let's say, castles here. 
And if knight bd7, knight here, I can't even take, because he just takes with his pawn, forking my queen and rook. So I'd have to seek play elsewhere, and my light square bishop remains a, li a liability. So castles, I played knight bd7, he went knight a4. I went here, just prophylaxis against a knight coming into b6. And he executed a uh, familiar plan when playing against a c5 pawn. It's a plan that I, as white, don't employ often enough. It's uh, this b4 idea. And he gets pressure against c5, and the pawn is pinned. I can't take it without losing my queen behind it. And by virtue of him having played a5 earlier, I can't play b6. I would just lose a pawn if I did that. Probably more. So I can't come to the rescue of this c5 pawn in a logical way. Knight d7 just seems horribly passive, so I wouldn't do that. He already has one, two, three attackers on this pawn, and I only have one, two defenders. So hence I played this bishop d7 move, just hoping to stir things up. Queen takes a5, and the position is complex, and we both were uh, nearing severe time pressure. So I think all told, I, I got out of that uh, situation with uh, about the best possible position I could hope for, given the bind he had with his knights on c4, a4 a moment ago. So here I played bishop f5, maybe taking is also possible. But um, I wanted to keep the attack on d5. If I take, his pawn no longer has to remain there, and maybe my d6 pawn is weak as well. I could go here yeah, and attack the rook, but I just wasn't sure. It just seemed like I was somewhat worse now. Weakness here, weakness here. So I played bishop f5. He took. I took on b7. And then rook d4, that seems to be a mistake. So he could return the knight to c3. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And then he defends d5, and the knight isn't in, in such a precarious position as it was in the game. Yeah, I'm worse, according to the computer. I have a passed a pawn, but it's more likely that this pawn is just a weakness than a strength. It's not far enough advanced, and there's too much material on the board to expect this pawn to be a major player in the coming moves. Meanwhile, d6 is also weak, whereas white enjoys a pretty sound structure um, with the pawn on d5. But he played rook d4, and then I was able to get this rook b4 move in, attacking the knight and the rook. Uh, I guess I'm not threatening to win the knight quite yet, because he does have the rook and the queen defending it. If queen d2 trying to pin me, uh, oh, then I could take on a4. Okay, I don't know why I thought queen d2 was possible in the game, but this just wins a piece for me. So he took, I took, but now he experiences certain problems with this piece. If he takes on a6 now, I assume I have rook a8. Yeah, and if the bishop moves away, we can win the knight. So all of a sudden, my pieces have sprung to life, and I got the better of him in uh, the piece activity department. So he played bishop f3. I played rook c8. Yeah, maybe knight e4 is better. Just immediate knight e4. Threatening knight d2. Forking the rook and the bishop. But rook c8 seems okay. I do have the idea of bishop c2. My knight is loose on f6, so I have to keep that in mind. He took advantage of that, playing queen a1, hitting the knight while still defending his own knight. So I sprung into the center. Maybe knight d7 is better? This just seemed like an aggressive move, so I played it. Takes, yeah, rook b1. I saw that he could try that. He didn't do it, though. He took, I took with a bishop, threatening d5, so he played rook d1. Yeah, and... If you pause to think too long in this position, given our time, uh, one of us is probably going to flag. <laughs> so I knew I might have had something right around here. Um, I did see that rook d4 was an idea for him, so I just instinctively got my queen out of the way. It's probably not the best move, but it's a move under the circumstances. And then bishop c2. I should have just taken the pawn, huh? Yeah, I didn't consider that. Bishop c2, but this pin isn't of tremendous value right now because I'm not threatening to win anything. So he correctly got his king off the back rank so he doesn't experience back rank issues coming up. h5, that was just an instinctive move. Queen d6, and from here it was a total time scramble. Um, bishop f5 is pretty horrendous because he can just take the pawn and his rook remains defending the knight. So instead I should have played rook c5, hard move to c, um, and his knight is pinned so he can't take it. And in doing so, I block the queen's access to d6, and I threaten to take on d5. So that's a tidy move right there. But I went here, and he quickly played queen b4. He was probably just looking to get out of the pin, and he didn't really consider that he could actually just straight up win a pawn. 
But um, I feel like once we get into this end game, I'm better once again because now this, the material situation has been reduced somewhat. So my A pawn gains in value. There's not as many obstacles to its eventual promotion. Ideal promotion, probably won't get there, but um, he doesn't have as many pieces or, uh, yeah, n not as many pieces to contest the pawn's advance. So, also we have pawns on both sides of the board, sort of. So I think my bishop could uh, be a larger factor than his knight. Like I said, he could try knight b6 here, but I think after rook b8, he's going to be struggling to get out of the pin. So he instead played e4. I played a5, attacking his rook. He went rook d4, so he can defend the knight. Rook into c2. And I thought I was getting the better of uh, the time scramble Check. starting right around here, but he played pretty well. I mean, I give him credit. He really put me under pressure with the central pawns. He advanced e5, and all of a sudden his d-pawn is becoming an issue. Yeah, I'm sure I didn't play this right. In retrospect, rook b2 would have been a much better idea right now after king f3 because then I get to attack his knight and distract him from simply pushing the e and the d pawns. But I played rook a2 trying to stay on the same file as my a pawn. But then e5 and after takes, takes here, might be a situation where I just have to give up the bishop for uh, the advanced d pawn. According to the computer, I should check. check. And what if king here? Rook e2 check, check, king d3. Rook e8 and try to get in a position to stop that. Yeah, I mean, your natural instinct when you're getting into a time scramble like this is to push forward and not try to focus too much on defense. So, like, I just kind of took a quick glance at the position and I decided that his d-pawn would warrant me giving up my bishop uh, and that trying to get the rook involved in the defense of the, of the d-pawn is difficult because if I play, like, rook c2, I'm not going to a square that I have control over. And he's ready to hit d7 on the next move. So, uh, rook b2 and give up the piece. Check. And fortunately, I had Check. enough in the tank to give him some problems here. Knight g4 was a big blunder at this point, allowing check. f5 to check. But, yeah, king e5 would have been better. Maintaining the knight on f6 and therefore maintaining the pawn on d7. And then his, it looks like his rooks can take care of these pawns. Like, if I try to run... He can just come back and corral these guys, and I can't do much. Yeah, can't move my rook too far. I mean, it could go on the eighth rank, but where's it going to go after that? It always has to monitor d8. So he was winning at the end, Check. but it's, with the time, it's almost completely a moot point. Check. But now all of a sudden, my pawns are valuable. Check. More so than his rook. Even if he came back to stop the uh, advancing g-pawn, I just play h3, and two pawns that have hit the... Sixth or third rank together are traditionally, as the rule of thumb goes, worth a rook. So one pawn on the third rank, one on the second rank should be worth uh, more than a rook. <laughs> you know, rook alone can't stop those pawns from advancing no matter where the rook is, unless it's in a position to take one. So, yep, and we got the flag down the stretch. Check. Check. I was worried because I was getting pretty low on time. Okay, so if I'm going to continue playing the Benoni, I probably will learn a thing or two from the black side. Um... And it's not an opening I would play over the board. I don't feel nearly comfortable enough, nor do I think this opening suits my style much. But it's interesting, and I'm constantly trying to learn new stuff. And the way to do that is just throw yourself into the fire and see what happens. So hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'll be back tomorrow with another one. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye.